Boom shakalaka. And this thing's not going anywhere. This was Lauren's brilliant idea. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this now. <laughs> Yay! Good job. Big steps. Big steps. In part one of this two-part episode, we dove into a bunch of repairs and upgrades to our diesel engine, a Westerbeek 40, whom we affectionately refer to as Mr. Beak. If you haven't seen part one, we recommend watching that first. We installed a new heat exchanger after a debacle with the old one, and then started making progress with our alternator upgrade, which requires replacing the belt, water pump, and crankshaft pulley. Now all that was left was to finish all the wiring and figuring out the correct alignment of the alternator. We're getting close. Okay, you just stay there for a second. It's not gonna wanna stay like that without having the- The bracket. The bottom bracket, but <laughs> damn! That's some boat bling. <laughs> Power! <laughs> Is that bracket gonna work? Well, here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna use it for now, and then I'm gonna get a thing called a Heim connector, which actually works like a turnbuckle, where you can make it longer or make it shorter so we can put tension onto the alternator and then thread these bolts down tight and then it's locked. Hmm. Sounds perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. So this is the old style alternator bracket, which was mounted here. You could tension by pushing out the alternator and then cranking this down real fast. But what would happen is when you'd go to tighten this, invariably it would slip in a little bit and you'd have to have someone to help kind of push against the alternator and then quickly tighten this down and so having this heim connector is really really cool to just one-handed make adjustments to the belt tension and then it stays there this was maybe a little bit flimsy for the much larger alternator as well you know ty made this for us i know <laughs> thanks ty yeah before we bought the boat actually like right after we bought the boat we didn't even know our neighbor made us a new alternator bracket because apparently was he cracked. was on the boat with the old owners and saw that it was cracked and so he took it upon himself and just got on our boat and, and put fixed a new it for us. bracket in for us without us even knowing what i mean what a freaking baller so yeah i think what it means right now is i need to go get a straight edge well we're gonna make sure that it touches both this side of the pulley this side of the pulley this side of the pulley mm. and that side of the pulley then we're gonna make sure it touches this side of the pulley, this no side, rocking that there. side of the pulley, that side of the pulley. There's no rocking there. Okay. But there is definitely rocking right. here. So, so that's that needs back to come a quarter inch forward. Forward. Boom shakalaka! But you gotta say what happened. We have a number of little bushings that I've made here of various sizes to get both the bottom and the top of the alternator in alignment to both pulleys. This way, this way, and this way. In a three-dimensional space, it was tough because we only have two mounting points. There's the tiniest bit. Mm. And here, there's none. That's pretty freaking good. Up. Taco salads. Taco salads. Taco salads. We're digging into the canned food right now. We're not even at sea. No. Actually, there's a lot of fresh stuff in here. We had to eat up a little bit of butter lettuce, some cabbage, and then the rest of it was from the cabinet. Kirk, are you gonna be able to eat this without all the stuff falling off the sides of the plate? Probably not. Kirk's in his favorite position. What are you doing now? I'm slightly changing the way that this is going to be wired. Our big thick battery cable, this is coming from our batteries, used to go to the solenoid and then jumped over to the alternator via that much thinner gauge uh, battery cable. This is a one aught, and that was like a number two, I think. And so now I, what I want to see is if I can connect this directly to the alternator and then jump back to here via that 
thinner gauge cable which then runs to our starter and because it's such a short cable run it won't have very much voltage drop but mm -hmm. it's also for such a short period of time that it won't be an issue whereas we're running the alternator for a very long period of time if that current's constantly going through that little cable it will heat up which will cause resistance which will cause it to heat up more when we're starting the engine it's only being electrified at a high current for 20 seconds at most mm. and it won't have as much resistance so we just pulled this off the engine uh, this is the external regulator for our old alternator and this is all the wiring that we're cleaning up and then this is the new max charge mc614 from balmar <laughs> A regulator which we're actually going to mount like right up in here. Balmar recommends that it not actually be right in the engine bay. They want it a little bit cooler. Um, so we figured out here um, we'll keep the temperature down but also the other thing is we have to program this every once in a while when we want to make changes and this little red dot you have to hold a magnet and it like cycles through a whole bunch of things and it's like real slow so um, we'll actually have a long enough wiring harness that we'll be able to pull it out here be able to see the display, do the programming, and then put it back up here and not have to be like all crouched and twisted and <clears throat> it makes it a little who's, more comfortable. Who's, whose brilliant idea was that? This was Lauren's brilliant idea, <laughs> by the way. Might I add? Yeah, so once we get everything all wired up, which will probably not happen tonight at this point. It's only 4.30. Yeah, I'm just gonna be moving slow, you know, check my work twice. Cause what happened earlier? Oh, I ruined a screwdriver when I touched the screwdriver from a hot wire termination screw to the side of the engine, which was grounded. Because I liked the song that I was listening to and didn't want to turn off the electricity, even though I knew I needed to turn off the electricity. Man, we all want to know what song that was. I don't even remember, to be honest. <laughs> I was just grooving. I just, I saw that this screw right here was a little bit loose and I was like oh I can just I'll just twist that and make that tight and then I was like hmm I should just check these other ones right here while I'm at it and then I was like Kirk wait you still haven't turned off the power don't do this you're an idiot and then I was like hmm I'm grooving and then uh, yeah mm. I shorted it out anyhow it's time for me to get back to work okay about 7 30 and I just got back from a run. Kirk's been working on this alternator wiring for a couple hours. We're in the dark because our DC is turned off so that he doesn't electrocute himself. And if I wasn't a cheap ass we could have just installed an engine disconnect like we were supposed to and then we'd have the whole power. <laughs> yeah but it doesn't really matter because we're connected to AC so right now it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, it's more like if we needed to do engine work while we were at anchor. Or right. It would be smart. Thank you, Laura. Uh, anyway, bigger problems are at hand, yeah. such as the state of the top of the fridge. And I'm supposed to be making cocktails. I right, love. Yeah. Everything's a little better with a gin and tonic. We got pretzels and battery cable cold pack from when both Kirk and I burned ourselves on the heat gun earlier today. Well, that one's ready. It's a nice reflection off the ceiling. Oh, that's good. All right, let's crimp some battery cable. All right. Check it out. Now we're gonna put on the belt. Goes on like this. Oh yeah. We can set our belt tension just by cranking this guy out. Tighter. How tight are you supposed to have it? Um, so it's supposed to deflect, I forget, like a half inch or something. Oh. Uh, not a half inch. 
much smaller than that, but with like 25 pounds of pressure. But it's basically probably a little tighter than that. Mm. So I'm gonna back it off for now because I'm actually, I gotta take this bolt out mm. and put some thread lock because there's I don't have a lock washer there. Okay, so once you've got your belt tensioned to where you want it, you can just go and thread these guys up and lock it in. And then this thing's not going anywhere. Cool, so besides getting a new bolt there and taking that out and putting some thread lock on that, what else we gotta do? Uh, we just gotta finish the wiring of the regulator. And then we get to fire this puppy up? Well, almost. I have to <laughs> fix a wire back there that the connector was coming off of that I noticed just doing an inspection of the engine. And then, yeah, we can go to fire it up. Yay! Good job. Big steps, big steps. Oh Continue. man, elbows. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this now. <laughs> oh, you wanna know what I'm gonna do? Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish wiring the alternator so that we can get the engine started. To make sure that cooling system that we mucked around with when we replaced the heat exchanger is not leaking, so we can fill up more coolant, to make sure our new water pump is working and not leaking, to make sure all the wiring is right on the alternator and that the engine runs. Okay, break. Back to work. All right, guy. All right, you, you got this. You ready for me to go? Yeah. So this is the first thing we need to see, is that this is going to start. The next thing I want to make sure is that our belt and everything is not freaking out. I want to check our power over here, and then I'm going to have to go around behind the engine on both sides and make sure that we don't have any leaks, and that we don't have any leaks coming out of here. Uh, the engine isn't making any weird noises or anything like that. Are you going to do 15 seconds? One, two, three. My heart's racing. Yeah. Good throttle. Throttle back. Is this water coming out? Water? Okay. Our regulator is starting up. Mr. B! Ha ha! And then we get to rip out our fuel tank. Yay. Yay. This was the issue right here. A little bit of fuel. Oh yeah, look at that. Corner. 